not least the events at the Witten Oval this week. <laughs> yeah, for those who haven't it wasn't at the Witten Oval, but the ramifications are being felt there. Yeah, Lockie Hunter overnight Thursday, TJ, for those uh, yet to catch up with it, uh, crashed into four cars, left the scene, was subsequently breath tested by police at uh, two and a half times the, the limit. And there's already been fallout to it, but more will come. Uh, almost certainly a, a removal from the, the official status he has as vice captain of the, of the Bulldogs. There will be, a, I would expect, a, a match suspension, a, a multiple match suspension from the club itself. And then there'll be a, a financial financial fine to come. The club uh, I've spoken to overnight, they are still wading through all the complexity of the matter and some of that complexity does clearly involve a 19 year old teammate in Bailey Smith who uh, allowed Lockie Hunter to, to flee the scene. Now again, how that happened and was he asked to take him away? Did he offer to take him away? But either way, it's it's a reprehensible look in, in my eyes for Lockie Hunter to, to get in the car with his 19 year old teammate at that point. When, in, when he just crashed the cars, I think he should have hung around and, and faced up to the, the consequences there and then, and a lot of this story would have probably been able to be have been dealt with at that point. Probably. Uh, you said allowed uh, Bailey Smith allowed him. I dare say Lockie would have rang Bailey and said, "Mate, come and grab me. I'm in a bit of trouble." Yeah. Whether he offered it, Bill, or, or whether he was asked to drive him, I, I don't know. But but I think either way, getting in that car with Bailey Smith at that point, it, it any implicated. But Bailey it's not Smith, Bailey Smith. No, no, no. I'm no. having. I'm not having. And Lockie's Bailey Smith done in. the wrong thing. We all know that. And he, and bloody stupid needs a kick in the bum and all that. But he'll be dealt with by the club and by the law. Yeah, he will. Yeah. He will. And, and the club, I, I expect the next 48 hours at, at the extreme of that time frame to have uh, come out with all those uh, types of outcomes. Yeah, Damo just touched on the vice captaincy. I've had a think about it. The law will deal with him in, in, yeah. in, in one sense. But from a vice captaincy perspective, I don't think he can, ever, can be vice captain again. I think you lose trust. I think he would have lost trust from some of his teammates. And... What happens is him and Bontempelli and whoever else is in the leadership group will have to deal with so many situations throughout the year. And if Lockie Hunter is sitting there listening to some of those, that that player would be thinking in his own mind, how's Lockie Hunter uh, you know, deciding on what my fate may be when he's done what he's done? So I think he's best just to go back, play footy, and try and win respect back of his teammates throughout this year. It's a good point you make, Lordo, and uh, everyone uh, you speak to, they think Lockie Hunter's a great fella, he's a great footballer. Yeah. Um, everybody down there is very popular. So the th one thing, he has lacked leadership in this instance and he's done the wrong thing, as you said, Bill. So yeah. maybe with the vice-captaincy. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it, vice-captaincy, you can either have it or not. Does it really mean you're going to play good, good football? But now Lockie Hunter, I think, needs to, before he's taken out of that vice-captaincy, maybe go to the club and go, OK, I've done the wrong thing. I'm going to give up the vice captaincy without it being a witch hunt, without Bond having to make the decision, yeah. without the coach having to make the decision. I think the best thing that Lockie, hunt, Lockie Hunter could do is say, I'm going to give yeah, up the vice captaincy. Is it, is it the biggest issue he's facing at the moment, the vice captaincy? It's I think, not, but it's going to be one of the issues it, I, I he has to, to deal with, yeah, TJ. Well, I would have thought it was pretty far down the ladder, to be honest. I mean, the, the legal ramifications, as yeah, Damo yeah. said, we're not just talking about the, the alcohol-related driving, the you know, decamping and also the, the lockdown laws, the breaches of that, yeah. but I would have thought at this point. But I know what you're saying yeah. from a football point of view, it is significant, but are you saying that his card should be stamped permanently? No, no. I said for the next 12 months, yep. go back. And if they vote him back in in 12 months' time, great. But uh, I doubt that would probably happen. Kane? Mm -hmm. I think it speaks to the, the concerns that I had when the lockdown or the footy was cancelled first was announced. And that was the mental health of the players. Now, by no means am I giving this any excuse because... You've got no excuse to jump in a car when you've been in and around alcohol, so it's not an excuse. But two incidents in two days speaks to the fact that some players won't cope with this. They won't cope with the lack of schedule, and instead of preparing Don't give me that garbage, weekend, Kane. Don't give us that home. bull's dust. I'm not, I'm not giving you... Don't I'm you not become you one of the apologists, mate. Saying, You're drink driving is drink driving. Oh, it's Don't not, you it's, dare start going down the apologies said, track. Mm. TJ... TJ, you didn't hear what I just said. That's what I just said. I said there is no excuse for drink driving. My concerns are for the mental health of the players. And that was my concern a month ago when I said it on Footy Classified because these players are used to having the structure that's been taken away from them. And they're no different to the rest of society. I get that. But my expertise is with AFL players and... This speaks that a number of them may not be coping and, and the AFL has got to keep yeah, an eye for it. and there's plenty of people who have actually lost their jobs, holders, bolus, mate, but not, not going around doing stuff That's like that, That's what I just said. I just said. Yeah, can, can I, I'm, I'm just with said, TJ. my expertise is... Kane, I'm with TJ on this. I think it's a cop-out to even throw this into the conversation. Um, Peter Gordon, the, the Bulldogs president, now, we'll just play a, a part of an interview that he did on the Friday morning. It was still new to him. He was only being made aware of the details. But he, too, referred to the, the phrase that has been part of his narrative, the cabin fever component. You know, cabin fever is a, a, a good word for it. And you know, I think, as you discussed, 
yesterday afternoon, whether yeah. you're a president or whether you're or whether you're a, a, a footy follower, everyone's dealing with it in or failing to deal with it in in their own ways. And so, you know, we need to do it together as a community. We need to help each other in relation to these times. And I think we do need to extend some humanity and some understanding to uh, what's going on in every household. Again, Peter Gordon talking as that story was breaking, and he did go into the other side of it, the unacceptable side of it. Um, the other reference to, to what Kane referred to there, guys, was Tyson Stengel, the Adelaide Crows player, last week um, also being caught uh, by uh, South Australian police for, for about two and a half times the legal limit too, in a story that didn't uh, get released by the club until about a week after it actually happened. So yeah. there were reasons for that internally, but uh, again, that it came after the, the public nature of the Lockie Hunter situation. It, uh, it left the club... I thought a bit exposed in how it dealt with that.